This piece of work represents a reflection of my practice and research over the past year. My work is multifaceted, inspired by a multitude of sensory experiences that I attempt to explore, reinterpret and represent as sensory experiences to my audience. Although I appreciate and enjoy academic writing, for me a written report would not express what I wanted to say and be a limited use in my practice. My world and my practice are visual and oral, a fusion of still and moving images of sounds, music and words. So it seems to me much more appropriate to use my creative skills to fulfil this module. The MA Fine Art programme has been particularly worthwhile for me. Although at the beginning I was unsure whether it would be the right choice, I didn't think that I'd get much more out of doing a further year of study in photography and I wanted to branch out much more. The MA has allowed me to experiment and push the boundaries of my photography and to explore work outside the realms of my previous practice. At the beginning of the course, I had a number of questions which I tried to answer during my degree course and my previous practice, but they still remained unanswered. Was I an artist, a photographer, both or neither? Was my work art and how did my photography and my work fit into the art world? For me at least, my work didn't feel like art. It felt as though years of commercial and documentary work had burdened me with a single sentiment, that my work was too commercial and that instead it should prescribe to what I saw as a set of outdated photographic traditions. That film was superior to digital, that work with saturated colours was commercial, that documentary work should be shot in black and white, and that photographic prints should be mounted and framed and hung on walls in straight lines, whilst being told that I should aspire to be like those millionaire photographers that started their careers in a world that no longer exists. On a fine art course where there are multiple disciplines, those sentiments have been left behind. I feel that instead of being asked why, I was being asked why not. I've strived through the course to find my place as an artist, to create work that I feel I can call art, and that has all the aesthetic and contextual qualities that I want to see in my work. That moment arrived for me when I hung a piece of work in the Priestman building of the University of Sunderland. An abstract image, technically definitely a photograph, but unidentifiable as such without context. The work was printed four metres wide, is imposing, the colours are saturated, an inkjet print from a digital file that's stapled to a wall. To me, this felt like art, and I felt like an artist. Perhaps an overindulgence on my behalf, perhaps purely vanity, but from a lifetime of looking at work in other mediums without there ever being a doubt about it being art, to find that in my own work is one of my greatest achievements. There's been a great deal of uncertainty for me in the past few years and a sequence of significant life-changing events. The course has allowed me to gather my thoughts about who I am as a photographer and what all of my experience, knowledge and skills count for. As we approach the end of the course, I have a much clearer and more defined vision of where I want to progress to and what my next steps are. In recent years, my work has been largely based around mental health working with charities, individuals and groups, making documentary films, running workshops and creating work to raise awareness of mental health issues. Prior to commencing the MA Fine Art course, I had set in my mind a direction I intended to take. I imagined that I would make yet another documentary film about mental health. At this time it would be bigger, better, more complicated, and I'd travel the country interviewing people. However, the reality of it was that mid-Covid, and a realisation for me, that after years of mental health issues and my constant immersion in the subject wasn't beneficial to my own health and that perhaps I should try something different, that I should take a step back and breathe. Running along the cliff tops between Sunderland and Seaham, I could see the opportunity to create in a way that was beneficial to my mental health. What inspired me most about this particular stretch was the ever-changing conditions of the water combined with constant variety of sublime lighting and the way that the water smashed directly into the land at high tide. It provides a constant stream of inspiration and awe and provided me with an infinite source of material. What I enjoyed more than anything about this project was sitting on a cliff top with a flask of tea, letting my camera do its thing. My experimenting often resulted in photographic exposures of over an hour and I'd watch as the sky and sea performed for me, visual and oral poetry 
unfolding as I contemplated and considered my life at that point. Beyond the mental well-being that I achieved in this project throughout, it has also allowed me to explore those unanswered questions I had. Each exposure that I created was carefully considered, not only for the technical aesthetic aspects, but also how each exposure progressed me towards answering the question about am I an artist? Certainly the process in creating the images, through the use of long exposures, sometimes in excess of an hour, was like most other artistic practices unpredictable. My experience and technical knowledge allow me to get the exposures to a minimum starting point. Beyond that, everything else is down to chance and luck. The results were sometimes spectacular, but often, particularly with very long exposures, the details would disappear into an indiscernible grey fog. Each outing would require a revised approach to balance time and motion, both in nature and in camera. I knew what I wanted to create. I wanted to make images that could be defined within the limitations of photography, that documented the subject, in this case the sea, in line with the traditional specifics of photography as a medium. I wanted to create images that maintained their purity as photographic images, but that weren't immediately recognisable as documentary photographs. For their properties as photographs, colour and content, sharpness and subject. Only through consideration did I want the audience to realise that these were photographs that they were looking at, and then to further consider their relationship with the contents. My practice is informed by lifelong inquiry and a search for inspiration. It could be described as a blend of narrative inquiry and Sean's model, bringing together stories and experiences with a rhizomatic gathering of information and inspiration. For this project, I remembered, reviewed and reflected upon a life of experiences, returning to sources and techniques that I discovered sometimes decades ago, things that I knew and were aware of, but that didn't have a purpose, but now do. I united those ideas with my current thinking, and the project combined all of my skills and knowledge with a multitude of inspirational sources, and improved upon my past work. I was inspired by the New York School of Art, in particular artists such as Mark Rothko and Barnett Newman. I was less inspired by their work than the effect they intended to have on their audience. I've read a great deal about both Rothko and Newman, but it's Rothko that's been a particular inspiration for me. In 2009, a collaborative exhibition of his work was shown at the Tate Modern in London and the Kawamura Museum in Japan. The catalogue from this exhibition has been a reference throughout this project, not only because of the excellent images of Rothko's work, but because of the excellent articles by art experts and curators, all attempting to decipher his work. His intention was for the audience to contemplate his work as much as he'd contemplated it in his creation. He wanted his work to envelop his audience, and this was realised in the sheer scale of his work, the buildings and galleries that he exhibited in, the low lighting and the minimal explanation of his work. In the book, The Artist's Reality, several of the essays discuss sensuality and how it's essential for the sensual elements to be included in some way in any work of art. This, for me, is the element that is missing from much of photography. Those sensory elements, such as texture, that are apparent even in the texture of a painting canvas. Photography, preserved behind glass, a flat print behind something even flatter, prevents us from experiencing the surface qualities. In my practice, particularly in this project, I've experimented with different printing mediums in an attempt to add an element of touch to the audience experience. Sometimes, photography can create a sensation of the need to reach out and touch it. Exhibiting a photograph in a way that not only allows you to do this, but for there to be an unexpected sensation when you do, adds a deeper layer of experience to an image. After not quite achieving what I was looking for, as to me, what was producing with the long exposure had been produced so many times before by numerous photographers, and finding work on an almost daily basis similar to mine, I tried another direction. Shooting under a full moon, I produced some images that excited me, but again, this sort of work had been done before. It was, however, a single shot of lights on the coastline, reflected in the sea, that really took hold. The image was softened oranges and blues, it was abstract in nature, 
but arguably documentary. The image would keep raising its head amongst the array of images that had taken over a period of about six months. From this point, I travelled the coast at night, shooting the reflections of light and water. In our light polluted landscape, there's a veritable palette of colours to choose from, and as a painter chooses their colours, so I was able to choose the colours I wanted in my work. Sometimes the palette was restricted to a narrow selection of similar colours, other times every colour of the visible spectrum was available. The series of images that I created are for me incredibly significant. To me this is an important distinction between a documentary image or an abstract photograph. Images that have been created through selection, choice, technical skills and experimentation rather than a direct documentation. Arguably artworks are proven for myself that photography, even restricted by the specifics of the medium, can produce expressionist abstract works of art.